Tim, I'm curious, you sold 800 doors. Talk a little bit about your reasoning for doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Um, I would say, uh, I, I'd say it's probably a few different things. First was I had some, some partners, joint venture partners who were kind of like the operating boots on the ground who, who weren't totally getting the job done. And um, it just got to a point, they had too much stuff, too many balls in the air. And I knew they were going to drop some of them. I said, hey, let's get some clear some things out. So that was not really market driven, just more of a, you know, uh, relationship gotcha. driven, I had to make that decision. Gotcha. Uh, and then I kind of, you know, I think it's really important. It's why we're in masterminds and uh, is to go and work on the business instead of in the business and really reflect on your business and what have you done and where, where do you want to be going mm -hmm. and kind of create the roadmap, right? Like we don't know where we're going if we don't have a destination of where we want to go to. And then you got to think about where you are right now. And then you can reverse engineer the map in order to get there. And I was doing some of that earlier part of this year and realizing that a lot of the smaller properties and the C-class properties that got me to where I am, you know, they were stepping stones to set me up for buying hundred unit plus B-class apartments today. Um, before though, I just needed to build my balance sheet. And so I was buying everything. I was, I, I wanted the momentum early on is more important than the actual asset that you're buying a lot of times. Gotcha. Um, and, and as long as you're buying rental properties, you know, it's hard to mess up a rental property that you're, um, <laughs> you know, that meets the 1% rule really is, is, is a great rule of thumb. So right. I was buying, uh, just any rental property, 12 unit buildings, 24 unit buildings, 60 unit buildings, 18 unit buildings. And I was just buying and, and, and organically growing my portfolio. So that way one day I'd have the balance sheet to then go and sponsor loans and sign on loans that are for these bigger, um, complexes. It got me a lot of respect from sellers, from brokers, and from lenders by right. just having the momentum built up. And so um, those buildings were great stepping stones to get me to where I am today, but it, it, those buildings aren't going to take me to where I'm going. And they're really more of an inhibitor than anything else. It was, it was um, they're very management intensive. They're very you know, use up a lot of brain calories and managing a lot of those properties and asset managing some of those. And so, um, you know, take a look at the market. It's a very opportunistic time for people who have good, uh, stabilized cash flowing assets. Um, I think what a lot of people don't realize in, but, you know, the traditional housing market where there's, you know, owner occupants and people f retail flipping houses versus rental properties mm -hmm. is, Although the market's great across the board for everybody, if you have a rental property that's not performing, rental properties aren't valued the same way as uh, a traditional owner-occupied property. An owner-occupied property is valued based on the comparable approach and really emotionally driven of what somebody's willing to pay for that property based on what is it worth arbitrarily to them. Right. Uh, an investment property is strictly based on the numbers. It's only based on the operations and the income approach. What's the income minus the expenses equals the NOI. And then there's a multiple of that NOI, that net operating income that the property's valued at. And so even if the market's ridiculous, like it is right now, even if there's a ton of buyers there, you know, out there like there are right now, even if um, interest rates are as low as they are right now, if a property is not performing, it's not going to get top dollar. Like they're still going to come in. They're going to buy it for what it's worth, not for what it can be and not in the investment side anyways. And, and uh, you know, that's good and bad, right? It doesn't have the swings that residential markets might have. Right. Investment properties mm -hmm. are more stable. It doesn't have the same highs, but it also doesn't have the same lows. And, um, you know, even when the market's bad, if you've got a great performing property, you can get top dollar for it. When the market's right. great though, and you don't have a top performing property, you're not going to get top dollar. So it's just, you, you got to be really good at operations if you're going to own rental property long term. And, um, you know, and, and obviously, fortunately, we're pretty good at that. We have a great team in place and all of our assets that we've been selling um, have been, you know, fairly stabilized. We, we all dealt with some stuff during COVID and, you know, had some non-paying tenants and all that kind of jazz that we had to work through. But uh, we're very happy with the sale prices of the properties that we have sold so far. And, um, you know, I think it's just kind of uh, trimming the fat, refining the operations, taking a step back to make some big leaps forward.